Yeah, I think uh, what my wife Karen and I kind of did was we introduced them to sports. For example, I was I absolutely loved baseball, and I wanted to play in the major leagues, be a catcher, and I expected my kids to have the same passion for baseball as I did. And that wasn't the case. And they played a few years, and they had some fun at it. But once it became apparent uh, that they didn't want to play, and we gave the option, hey, you don't want to play, you don't have to. And same thing with football. And um, I guess it kind of just burned into our DNA that uh, they're passionate about it. And we made it clear to them, look, you don't have to play football. Don't do this because of mom or dad or uh, the rest of the family. Um, do it because it's something that you enjoy, and that's been the case so far. Yeah, yeah. you know, it's uh, I, obviously, you know, Bruce, I have a twin brother, and we both played in the league. My brother played as long as you and your brother did, like 16 years. But was there ever, I mean, that competitiveness uh, that exists between siblings, that has to trickle down through your entire family because your sons, Jake and Mike and Kevin and Luke, who's in high school and likely will follow the path of everybody else, and then your nephews, Clay and Casey and Kyle, they've all done this. There's got to be an internal competitiveness that drives the success of the Matthews football family. Yeah, I, I think so, Tiki. I, uh, I was abnormally competitive to the point of, you know, throwing <laughs> uh, rolls of paper or tape into a trash can. And, you know, I remember back to elementary days and recess, and I, I absolutely loved going out there, whether it was playing tag or punch ball or tether ball or basketball. I just loved competing. And um, to me, it never was like uh, something that I had to push myself into. I enjoyed it. And, and I really think it's a gift that God can give us. And um, because if I had guys, as as I played, I should say, there were guys that came up to me and, man, how do you play for so long? And to me, it was the most natural thing because it, it wasn't like I was doing anything out of the ordinary. I mean, God gave us bodies that could take the pounding, but at the same time, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the practice. I mean, there there were definitely times when it was a grind. It was hot and miserable or, or you're mired in a losing streak where it wasn't fun, but still it's like, Man, I was stealing for a lot of years, getting to, to be a kid, basically. <laughs> and I was 40 my last year, and I'm thinking, man, I could be uh, holed up in an office somewhere, having a regular job. And, you know, I'm in there cutting up in the locker room, talking smack, and I'm 40 years old and getting to be a kid. It's amazing. So to Bruce Matthews with us here. Excuse me, Antiki and Tierney, and you mentioned, Bruce, that you're a big baseball fan, and, and I'm looking at your numbers here, obviously. You come up in 83, and that was the George Brett Pintar game. And just as a point of reference, your last game, as you said, basically two years after Y2K. <laughs> that guy, kind, of puts yeah. in a, kind of puts it in perspective, as, as Bruce is with us here on the show. Now, Bruce, you spent the entirety of your professional life with the Houston and obviously the, the Tennessee Titans uh, as a player and then even as a, as a, as a coach. When we look at that team, and we had so many doubts. I know you still follow them, but we had so many doubts about where they would be in this Musgrave, uh, um, um, Munchamps, um, uh, yes, it's the system that was old school. It was like, let's just go to Malarkey, you know, play smash mouth football. Let's run the ball. Let's, we don't need to throw the ball a million times. Can they be successful like they were a few years ago uh, back when uh, Jeff Fisher was the head coach? Oh, absolutely. And, um, you know, Munch has taken that mindset up to Pittsburgh as well, and they're running the ball as well as uh, they ever have. But uh, they invested a couple high draft picks, the Titans, that is, at their offensive tackle position with uh, Conklin and Taylor Lewan. And um, they've got uh, proven running backs with, I uh, can't remember the Heisman kid from uh, Derek Alabama. Henry. Yeah, Derek Henry. Yeah. But you get that mindset and um, you play solid defense and keep the game close and geez, that's a recipe for winning. And I, I, no question. Um, the league has gone the way of the, the offensive gurus, spreading people out and um, trying to get matchups, which is smart, which I know the Titans do as well, but, you go back to that mindset of just hammering people, and that 
that transcends, I think, all eras of football. And if you can run the ball when you want to and not just when it's convenient, man, you can do great stuff. Yeah, no, you can. You're right. You know, Bruce, a personal question for you uh, relating to today's players. Have you had a chance to either block for Le'Veon Bell or Ezekiel Elliott? Who do you think it would be more fun blocking for these days? Jeez, whoever gains lots of yards and gets really good gifts at the end of the year. I know Tiki <laughs> yep. obviously had to take care of his offensive lineman, but no, it, it's amazing. Um, as an offensive as a lineman, typically you recognize when bad stuff happens, false start, holding sacks, and you love it when people know about your quarterback or even more so about your running back, and you guys are running the ball well. That, that's the greatest badge of honor you can have as an offensive lineman. And those two guys, uh, they're similar but different, obviously, and uh, they both got it going on. And um, the guy – the teams that can run the ball best at this time of the year, the teams typically that advance. Yeah, I would agree with that. Now, your son uh, is going to take on Michael Bennett. How does he, what, what is his mindset? Do you, I know you have to have these conversations with him uh, going into games, especially big games like this, as the Falcons, uh, your son Jake, is, is, is taking on uh, the Seattle defense, which has been as good as any over the last couple of years. What's his mindset right now? Yeah, uh, it's funny going back. Uh, Kevin, my older son, played with or was right after Michael Bennett at Texas A&M. And we were able to watch Michael Bennett. And, you know, I've had three of my boys play there. And so we're very familiar with him. Obviously, he's had a great career up at Seattle. They've been in a couple Super Bowls, won one of them. And they, the kids, the word that I use to describe him, he's disruptive because he'll do stuff that's unconventional. But at the same time, he will has the recover ability to get back and make the play. And, you know, the Falcons played Seattle earlier, and they were getting after him, Seattle, that is, early on defensively. And with the crowd noise and everything, that's, that's a volatile mix up there for an offense. And then uh, Atlanta found their uh, feet a little bit, and then, they really were productive, I thought, offensively. And the thing is, an offensive lineman, and I tell this to Jake all the time, we have a lot of conversations about it, is you got to do what you do well. And then, yes, you do modify it to your opponent. You study your opponent. And like I said, Michael Bennett, you got to be ready for everything. He's quick. He can come with a speed to power rush. But at the same time, do what you do well, and then – play the tendencies based upon what your opponent does. You can't rework your game every week to who you're playing because you can't really uh, get better at that. So it's do what you do, do it as well as you ever have, and stick with the plan and, um, you know, and understand that they're going to make plays. They're just too talented, and guys in on defense in the league are too big and strong and fast and well-coached. And understand that Seattle's going to make plays and just minimize the loss and get back there and refocus on what you might have done wrong and, and fix it the next play. 